Welcome to coverage of the fourth annual 21 Hole Salute presented by Jomez Productions and Final Round Radio. I'm Andy Go of Final Round Radio, joined by Kevin Burgess and Kevin Keith, also of Final Round Radio. And fellas, what are you looking forward to here with the 21 Hole Salute? Man, I'm really looking forward to uh, some really sweet fly throughs that we've never seen before. Uh, I know that Jonathan does some great, great stuff in the past, but man, he's got some nice, co- nice stuff coming up for us. Yeah, big thanks to Jomez for coming on up and filming. Also, we have some outstanding players. We, we look forward to a great time uh, looking at these lead cards in the men's pro open division. It should be a great time. All right, well, let's go ahead and get started here with hole number one. Hole one, great starting hole at R.L. Smith. It's uh, 358 feet right to left, and the basket is on a downhill slope. So like what, are, that. what are we going to be looking for off the tee? Well, I can tell you that a lot, of, a lot of guys, even on the pro division, were having some trouble figuring this thing out. You notice um, guys taking both the inside and outside line over, around that first tree coming in. If that would have missed that tree on the left, that probably would have been really, really close. And just gets inside of that first guardian tree. Nice skip up into the fairway. It rolls down that slope, though. But uh, you should be having a, a look at the par or a look Easy at the par. deuce. Well, looking at that second camera position, you can see uh, even with Ken taking it pretty wide, it's tough to fade in and up that hill. And here, Ken's going to have a hard time getting up and down from where he was. Here's Philo Brathwaite with a smooth hyzer shot, and it just lasers right down the middle of the fairway. He's going <laughs> to stops on a dime, though. No skip there for Philo, but he'll be looking at his deuce. Here is Matt Culp with his tee shot. And the entire card elects to go with the backhand hyzer route. That one's fading in there smoothly. A little deep. A little deep. I can tell you that um, out of all the cards that played this hole, it seems as though the more successful route was on that right side, fading pretty heavy. And that's what you want to try and do off that tee shot is try and throw a big wide hyzer there so it fades back in towards the basket. But, of course, some of the uh, guardian trees out there on the fairway make it tough. And this hole has a big roll potential too, so a lot of times you have to make your putt or, or your upshot has to be on point. So for all those who haven't played here or haven't been over to the East Coast, welcome to Charlotte Disc Golf. This is uh, challenging, technical, and you have to have an arm. That is, most certainly is. There's a lot of elevation on this course, some tight fairways, but they're all fair, and we should uh, be in store for a good round of uh, competition here as we see the card finish their up shots. Philo. Makes him run at it, and he just gets the outside of the chains. Pops out. Looks like it stayed up, though. Yeah, I'd be disappointing as a top 23 in the world pro hitting the am side of the chain. Yeah, don't you like how he's angry from 55 feet out that he didn't make it? <laughs> well, that's what separates uh, guys like Philo from uh, you know the weekenders here. Man, McAlpine looks like he's sweating over a little early putt, a little early jitters maybe. You know, he said he hadn't played a whole lot recently and uh he was looking forward to a, a good showing for this tournament maybe that pressure is a bit too much for him and now weston's going to finish up his part as well look at that t-shirt and that <laughs> is the final round radio t-shirt being worn by a good friend philo brathwaite who of course was on the radio show um just the week before this uh tournament uh took place so Hole number two, 230 feet uphill with a tight mando to the right and the flyover, although it does look great, of course, you can really see the angle of elevation there that players have to deal with off the tee. You can see a backhand Anheuser uh, from Weston Isaacs. That's probably what a lot of players will throw here. That one comes up short. And think about it. All these guys can bomb well over 400, 450, but they are struggling to get plastic high and, and, and wide enough on this pretty short, you know, linear linear shot here. K- K- KB, what makes this shot so tough off the tee? Uh, just convincing yourself to throw it high enough. I mean, you have to throw something. I mean, even that right there, it's a rock. He's left with a really tough 25-footer way uphill. So a lot of a lot of times people go driver, you know, understable driver, driver on an Anheuser. And there's and a do beautiful that. shot there, and it sticks up nicely. Hands down, one of the best shots you'll ever see on this hole. There's Taberski. Gets it out there in that early tree there, and that's that'll put you at a disadvantage on your second shot. Ken Taberski. Ken Taberski playing. um, Plays it up nicely. Really well here, throwing all uh, discraft discs. I can tell you that uh, he he looked at a few different 
ideas on this shot. He bounced between throwing something like an, a beat up XL or a few of the mid ranges he has in his uh, bag. A nice birdie there from Philo, cashing in on that 25 foot putt, which again is uh, right about at a 45 degree angle. So not not an easy uphill putt per se, um, but he makes it look like that. And Some cleanups here. No we deal. finish it out with a deuce and. Tabersky finishes up his par. Weston's parked as well. So we'll move on to hole number three. Hole number three is a great shot downhill, 265 feet. And you can really see uh, there on the fly through that there's a couple of different ways that you can approach this basket. Uh, there's a hyzer shot to the right, a forehand shot to the left. And if you're feeling really frisky, you can always go right down the middle here. Oh, that's an ace run. Oh, oh let's see that again. Yeah, let's see that again here. Cow pie. Great, close. great hyzer, great pull, and that's exactly what you want to do is take a stable disc, usually a putter oh. or a mid-range, just flex it out there to the right and let it attack the basket. Almost got an ace out of that. What's he throwing here? By the way, K-squared was on the bag, so Kev, what are we looking at here? Yeah, I can tell you that uh, Philo uh, practiced a few different shots here, but uh, he ended up deciding on the stable T-bird the entire tournament attacking this hole. He even considered throwing a forehand, which you don't see a lot from Philo Brathwaite. Oh, yeah, that's a problem. That is a wide route right there. That's a little bit wider than what you want. Here's Isaacs with the pancake thumber. Yeah, the uh, overhand shot gets it down there. Parked. And a friendly roll is going to put him about 10 feet from the basket. Nice shot there. And uh, another example of how many monkey. different options that you have at this hole. Monkey see, monkey do. <laughs> Here's <laughs> Ken Tversky. His takes a similar pop. Just a little bit outside the range. But so it's like this is probably about a 65-footer here, just kind of hoping a prayer. And out of those trees, too, those trees are thick back there. So yeah, that's where Philo is, too. Definitely what, 50 feet here or so? Yeah, about 55. And you can see the rough is rough. <laughs> and but Philo makes it look easy. So smooth a release from tucked inside those woods, those brushes. Still doesn't look happy. Uh, yeah, who could be happy with a 55-foot bird from the <laughs> real rough rough of R.L. Smith? Well, he was probably still upset about his tee shot and having to make a 55-foot putt. That's from, probably true. From the grass. Absolutely. Cashes in on his deuce, as does McAlpine. If you're looking at a tournament weekend, this is definitely one of the holes you absolutely must get the deuce on. Absolutely, because you really have so many different ways to look at it. No matter what type of player you are, there's a, a shot that goes to that, to your strength. Hole number four, 420 feet, and this is, where, this is where the course starts getting really tricky. This is a downhill shot across a tight fairway with a creek OB running to the right, the length of the hole, and you really got to be able to place your upshot because there's that creek wraps around the back of it. And if you go left, you're in trouble too. And those woods on the left are not easy to navigate out of, especially with the angle that you have to take for your second shot. Here is Philo just lacing it right down the Ooh. middle. And, oh, it catches the trees on the right side. That might be out of bounds. K-square, is that in or out? Do you remember? Uh, it was pretty close. It was pretty close. It ended up staying in for this round. I can tell you that uh, this and mall, that I believe it was, out. that was thrown was perfect. You want to take something that will hyzer flip and just glide straight down the fairway. 35 footer left or so. Here is Tversky. Got it on a nice line, and if it doesn't fade, then it's going to be looking good. Uh, it stays tap in, in the fairway. Tap in three, though, from there. It's definitely one of the few holes on this course that will, will be a little forgiving once your disc hits the ground otherwise. And Matt Culp's fading out into the left there, and again, that's that tight woods, but it looks like he got it up there fairly well, so might be able to get a good shot for his approach. Here's Philo with a backhand Anheuser. That's a little a, bit short, that's but a nice touch. A little bit short, but it is nice action. Not a lot of people who can uh, manage mid-ranges as well and as smooth as Philo Bradley. And getting out of trouble there can be tough as... Well, he didn't really get out of trouble. He just got back into more trouble. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Here's Tversky's upshot. I'd be shocked if he goes for it. Looks like he's a making half a run. run at it. Well, he played that one fairly safe. I don't think that was quite a run in full heart, but a layup with a chance is all you can call it. But uh, And right behind those trees there, as you can see, the, that creek runs probably about 20 feet behind the pin. There, oh, so what a bird. That's a bonus. Nice birdie, of course, for Isaacs as he's able it's to It's only because right that out. basket is tilted and a little bit more open, right? That's the only reason he can make it. Not because he's a world champion putter. 
Well, from that angle, it does tilt a little bit. You can see it there when Philo takes his disc out of the basket. And the Cowpunk is going to card a four there on that one. You know, KB just said that this hole is a bonus. It's absolutely true. Uh, not a lot of pros were trying to go for it all out off the tee for this. It's not an easy basket to reach for the deuce. You really have to be able to place that shot on a line off the tee. Hole number five, 535 feet, another par four, and this is a monster of a hole out on R.L. Smith. You've got the creek running OB all the way down to the left, and it even crosses in front of the basket too. Off the tee here is a dog leg, left to right, as you can see there with the thumber shot. And if you can get past that guardian tree in the sewer, you have a nice look at your second shot. Philo with the forehand, the rarely used forehand for Philo. I want to see that. Yeah, let's see that again here. I think he cut that a little tight. A little bit tight. Yeah, it's a little tight. That's a little skinny off that tree. And you say a, a hair of luck? He's still not happy. <laughs> <laughs> is Philo ever, ever happy on, on the disc golf course? Uh, if he wins, probably. Nope. Here is Tversky. <laughs> <laughs> Ken's even in more trouble. This is arguably the hardest hole on the course. It really is, and because you're dealing with such a tight fairway. And By the way, you do do that. If Holy you can do crap. that, if you can flex it around like that, you'll be sitting pretty good. But if you hyzer out and it fades out to the left there, and that <laughs> might be exactly <laughs> what we're about to see. You haven't but seen that, this, have you? That is going to be OB. No, okay, because you just called it without even knowing. Yeah, you know, Robin McAlpine, good. Uh, That's not a good layup, sorry. kid. <laughs> Robin McAlpine, good friend of the show, but uh, he definitely struggled on this hole, as you can see. And again, flirting with that left side, there is OB all along that area. So we'll see if he stayed in bounds. Pins throwing what three here this after a layup? Third. This is his third. Yep, oh. and he hits early wood. That's going to be frustrating. See if he's in bounds. There's Culp with the up and down for a birdie approach. here. Let's see if he can do it. And again, the basket's uphill there. It's on a slope, so if you can skip it up there, you might have a chance at it. And it's a putt. Thirty that's footer. That's going to be a putt for birdie there from Matt Culp. Here is Isaacs with a nice backhand. That's a professional layup right there. That is. If you put it right by that sewer main right there, then you'll have a look at it. So uh, what is Philo lining up here? Nothing. Layup. Were no? you caddying for him on this hole? I surely Here's was. What? I told him to play his game, and this is what he busts out. That was not too bad of a shot. <laughs> not too bad? <laughs> that was fairly nice. Come down to Charlotte and play that hole, go over there, and try to get on the green. Jesus. From that spot, it's yeah. it's not easy. And Philo just, again, Ooh. he makes so many things look so easy. And Tversky looks what? like he picked <laughs> off early tree and then gets even closer than Philo. All right, that was a bit of a greasy shot, but Tversky was working hard this entire hole trying to make, figure things out. And this hole makes you work. This hole makes you work harder than any hole I can think of. And Ooh, just barely. Alpine just barely stays in. There is That's a man, easy four. He'll take that any day. Comma or no comma, if you're if you're having to lay up out of the right hand side and are able to confidently tap in a four, you're happy on this hole. Good putt, McAlpine. So this is for a bird. Just mm -hmm. off the chastity belt. That's a tough one. That man, if you can take home a three on this hole, then you're feeling really good about yourself. Speaking Sp of Yeah. And as I say that. Who else? Care about clear. Oh, go ahead. Nice shirt, Philo. Thanks for the smile. Philo Brathway giving a little love to the camera, saying, yeah, I knew I had that. Very well cleared. Here is Tversky. After a little bit of talking back and forth. The Carter was having a really good time, even though the hole was tough. Uh, there, there was lots of banter, lots of laughter the entire round. Well, Matt Culp talks a lot of smack, so that's probably what it is. Hole number six, 276 feet, another par three. This one is left to right, a great forehand shot, and it's downhill ever so slightly. So if you can get a nice forehand out there and get it to skip, you can be right at the basket. Milo's going for that look right now. Looks little like tight. he hits early tree. Yeah, those forehands are a little bit outside of his game's character, but you, you don't really want to take a any. Um, putter or any uh, mid-range on this hole. Is that what he was doing there? He was thinking about it. He ended up going with the forehand. It is the ideal yeah. shot, unless you have yep. that left-handed uh, backhand hyzer. See a lot of these players taking the low line here as Tversky does the same. Gets it up there a little bit higher, but generally I've found that that high line is really where you want to go. And, 
And a bad roll there for Tiburcio. Yeah, that should have been parked. But he does end up about pin high, so a little bit of a higher line is, is kind of what you want to go That's for. That's interesting you say high line. I usually like to go a big power low line on the flick, so maybe it's just preference. Yeah, yeah. You can get that skip if you get play that in there, but if you can get it up nice and high, you have a good chance of spiking into the basket. You know, uh, I'm definitely going to have to lean towards KB on this one. That uh, that spike Heiser with the flick oh, no. might be safe. Oh, no. It's a roll away. Oh, wow. Uh, I didn't roll away too far. That's only about <laughs> 20 God. feet or so, so. Philo now with his approach shot. <laughs> oh! That's it. Oh. <laughs> nice shot. Almost cut it in what? off the fly. That magical firebird right there. That like, what did it do? Hit a rock or something and slide up there? Well, you got to remember that the uh, ground here is very, very tightly compacted. So uh, skips Ooh, on this right course. Chance. If you know, if you can play the skip game on R.L. Smith, then that adds a different dimension uh, to your round. Well, especially if, there wasn't much rain here uh, running up to the tournament, so it's it's even more dry than usual. Yeah, if nothing else, you, you'll definitely learn how to respect the roots Ooh. of this course. Matt Culp with a second straight putt off the chastity belt. That's got to feel tough. Uh, for Matt Culp, that's two straight strokes he could have saved uh, by being a couple inches lower. Calpine cleans up. Yeah, that putting form of his is uh, is very unique, but it's working for him at the moment. This is one of those holes, though, where if you can if you can get a stroke on the card on this hole, that's that's a good hole to have because uh, there's certainly other cards, there's certainly other holes in this course where you just have to keep it together. I'm shocked none of them actually got the birdie. Here's hole seven, 356 feet, and again, the pin, as you can see, is parked uphill just on the lip of that hill, and there is that creek again that runs OB along the right side of the fairway, and if you can get a nice flex shot, that is the line to play. Philo gets it, but it's just a little bit wide. Nick the tree, but it should be putting. Look at those fantastic wraps. Who, guys, tell me, who, who, who put those on the uh, tee pads? Man, you know who it is. I believe that was uh, our buddy Josh Tolly of That's Wrap Installations here in Charlotte. He did a great job with those wrapping no uh, way. tee pads. And uh, did he get what? that inside? <laughs> did oh anybody see goodness. that? Did anybody see that? <laughs> Another one for posterity. Yeah, and even Ken knows he got away with one right there, but that is a little bit tighter than usually that you want to take that That's route. like one out of 40. Walking on that card, I can tell you guys, he split the defense on both <laughs> trees on the right-hand side, both sets of trees. There is That's Culp's a beautiful shot. shot. That's nice and high, fading out, and it does get past the woods Thank there. You. You. Beautiful Bless shot you by Matt Culp. He'll be looking at a – at a birdie from the base of the hill. Here's how you know these guys are all Ooh. pro caliber. Is uh, This shot is a really tight and, and well-controlled, high-speed driver, anti-flex. So not even really an anti-flex, more like a hyzer flip and heavy um, fade, so that way you can try and skip up that hill. This would also be a bonus hole, too. You know, just like four, this is definitely a bonus hole. This is one of those holes, I think, where, again, if you can keep it together and not go with a four or worse because the rollaway potential here when you're putting towards the basket is so high. Yeah, he didn't deserve to make that after that drive. <laughs> that was a greasy drive, guys. Yeah. Let's, let's admit it. That should be a... Oh, oh, just outside the chains, and that's exactly what we were talking about. That rollaway is so easy. On this green, I mean, the green is fairly, green? is fairly non-existent when you think about it. It is literally on the spine of that hill. Uh -oh. Now Philo <laughs> gets, wow. Oh, and that could have been even hey. worse because it's not unheard of to have a disc roll De all the way from the, from the basket all the way to the OB creek. Wait, wait, did we just have a rewind in the, in the uh, uh, video? Because yeah. uh, that was the exact same putt. Pretty much, except this time it went in center yeah, chains, actually. Yeah, that's... <laughs> Look at that slow walk. He's a little pissed. That's <laughs> <laughs> that saves his four on that hole. And like I said, that's this is a hole that you don't want to get a three on or anything below a three. That's a great putt, too. Death Huge putt. putt. Let's see what McAlpine has here. Ooh, Ooh, and he goes off really the really edge. Good. And, again, there's another hill on the back. It's just laying up the next two. one. Yeah. S sometimes you have to. Calculate your strokes and see, is it worth it for me to run this? Swallow, it absolutely yeah. is because <laughs> the chance of uh, going past it is so long. Hole number eight, 247 feet. Definitely a birdie hole here. Uh, a short right to left downhill shot. Again, the creek running OB past it. But for most of these pros, we're going to see a hyzer route with the putter. Ooh, and a putt. Isaacs is about a little outside circle as circle's edge there. Here's Taberski. Nice smooth Looks like release. a hornet. 
He's been uh, he was chucking mid ranges the whole time. Fades back, and that's exactly how you want to do it. Just throw that nice stable hyzer with your putter or mid range, and let it do the work. And Culp releases a little bit late. He's gonna have a tough second shot from there. Old Final. school champion Rock coming out here. Seems like a lot of this sometimes. Gets it up nice and high, argue. and he attacks the basket. Philo nicely done. Philo, does Philo throw any putters off the tee pads? He, he's not big on throwing his putters. He, he likes to reserve his putters just for putting. Yeah, you'll, you'll see him take maybe those 100-foot approaches or less even with a, with a rock and do like a jump up with a DX rock. Must be a control thing. Culp, of course, hit that early wood, and that's a tough second shot to make because the angle's so difficult. And... Uh, He's going to have to make a long one for Ooh, Robbie Parr. gave it the height. Here's Culp. There's really no danger on running this. It looks like it might be a little tricky behind it, but you'll have a 20-footer. Culp's going to have to have his comebacker for uh, Bogey Ooh. there. Philo, the easy tap in. I like how they all tap in. You get him from McAlpine's back there going, all right, come on, let's go. <laughs> Wait a second. Is this not a violation of PDGA rules we're seeing right here, or at least bad sportsmanship? K KB, you're the TD. Rule on this. Ah, uh, man, just pace of play. They're pros. Fair enough. Now, these guys all had a big laugh off the tees when I, a few of them kicked far right, far left. They knew what was going on. Hole number nine, 394 feet, par four, a long straight tunnel shot that you have to finish to the left, get around a mando, and then go uphill to the basket. And if you can park a good shot off of the tee, then you can get birdie this one very easily. Ladies and gentlemen, this is how it's played. Ooh, I don't know. A little bit wide there. It looks like he took a skip or maybe hit some of the woods there on the right, but should have a great look at three, though. There's Philo's tee shot. Looks like that. Same rock again. Like Andy no, said, that, though. That was a T-bird, yeah. Like Andy said, though, if you get off the tee pad, I mean, it's one of the easiest up and downs for a, for a birdie. That's going to be a little bit tight from Isaac. He almost got lucky. And he bounced to the right there, so it could have been worse. If you end up on those uh, woods to the left, then you're really dealing with a world of hurt. There is McCalpine. That's one way to look at it. there and a bit long. Down. <laughs> that might have been. It's he went with the high route. He didn't mean to. It's about 300 and... A little over 300 to get to that point where you want to turn, so it's uh, not out of the question to go past that point. Here is and you can see that Mando tree he's throwing around. Yep, on the left there on top of the tree, that orange Probably sign. It's a little bit faded, but it's there. And that was a wise gamble because he looked at the Mando, he looked at all the trees to throw around to stay in the fairway and said, you know what, let me find a window and just go for it. And there are a couple of windows that go up to the pin there, but you really have to select your shot and be confident in it when you're throwing it because anything less and you're going to be – Knocking yourself down short. I mean, a lot of times, too, if you're over there, you're either throwing a roller to get under it all or you're throwing this huge, ridiculous, like, flex flick over everything. So That was a nice up there by uh, McAlpine. Philo going with the same okay. route, the hyzer, and he parks it right by the basket. This is going to be an easy three there. And that's where he goes goes the time when he throws one of his putters. Well, yeah, that's true. It's not off the tee pad, though. That's a good run. just a little short, but it skips up. It's one of those you might as well run it. Yeah, it's pretty safe behind the basket, uh, as That's long as exactly you're not putting back towards the rocks. That's exactly what Taberski was going to do, but he's just a little bit short. That's for a birdie. Culp, up Got and it. in. Nice job. I wanted to cut through. Finally. Puts a lot of spin on it, he does, doesn't he? There's a, there's a like way that, that you, you know, if you, get, if you can cut the corner on those trees, that you can get an easy path there to a three. There's Philo for his birdie. A bit of a death putt. No it fear. is, but not for, not for a guy like Philo. Pro side every time. A couple of easy cleanups. Yeah, so uh, KB, just tell us a little bit about this tournament. Uh, this is the fourth one that you TD'd for. How, how did it feel? How, you know, what'd you like most? Uh, I like having more volunteers, so I can just sit back and do a lot less. <laughs> nah, man, I uh, it's it's working hard uh, all the time just to get this thing going, and just like I could be a part of it. Hole number 10, 328 feet. This one is just a straight-ahead fairway, but you do have to contend with some uphill off the tee, and then the basket is downhill, slowly sloping after that. So a nice like, hyzer flip shot, and Philo just gets over the uh, hill there. And well, he's he's four down and ticked. That's amazing. Well, he and McAlpine did the exact same shot, a little bit too low and a little bit too left. Um, I'm pretty sure, if I remember correctly, they were over there making minis. 
And that is a nice looking pull there from Culp. A little right. That's right. And it hits some of the trees, but that'll be playing very well. And you really will just want to get that hyzer flip and have the disc fade left to right for a little bit there. Tversky oh. going right down the middle. Oh, that's so a beautiful sneaky. throw. That so is sneaky. a beautiful throw from Ken Tversky. You cannot do it any better than that. All right, hold on. If you okay, <laughs> see that's that comes into play. That tree right there most of the time. You're really getting greasy if you go right of that tree. I'll bet he was thanking the, you know, thanking Treesus as they say. And a tight out shot there for Philo. That is a tough wow. look there for. He was jammed back there, huh, Kay? It was, really, it was really tight. He had a bush up his left posterior and a, oh, a log over his right leg. So it's, it's tough in that corner here. And here he is That'd for be tough for anybody. Shot. And just wanted to get it up and down there, take the bogey and get out of there. I don't think he wanted to take the bogey. No, as opposed to taking worse. Nah, he, he, oh! he was definitely giving him a run. Oh, holy man. moly. That was huge. That was a good Boom. feet out, 75 feet out. Wow. Very nicely well, done. Yeah, you, you were saying he gets a lot of spin on his disc, and, and that makes for such beautiful glide on his putts. Yeah, he does. I'm not sure who he's putting with now, but he used to putt with Wizards. No, I think he might still be. Still be putting with Wizards? Cool. Isaac's there. That was for his uh, par as well, so he'll be looking at it 4 2. Some more tap ins here. Yeah, I'm pretty sure these guys are eager to get off this hole. This hole is sneaky. Oh. <laughs> and that is a tough one there. 12-footer, the no chance. Yes. The infamous 12-footer. I mean, I ball. guess maybe maybe <laughs> we should go to the next hole now, but let's make sure these guys tap them out. Yep, and uh, Tabersky cleans up that beautiful, that beautiful birdie there. We move on to hole number 11, 221 feet. It is downhill. Uh, basket is to the right, but there's two different ways to attack it. A backhand right-to-left hyzer, or as we're going to see here from Matt Culp, the forehand left-to-right finish. And the right, the right route with the backhand is hard to keep it on the green. Uh, so a lot of times you'll see people go that left route with the forehand. Uh, just so kind of like that. Just skips over, and there is a nice little ledge there. But even if you go off into that ledge, you're still... Uh, sh you're still set up for a nice birdie putt there, so even if you have to go uphill a little bit, it's not the worst place to be. Another forehand. And you, you'll notice that uh, Philo's throwing forehands that he rarely will go to as his desk. What was the reason for that? Is he trying something new out in his game? or? Well, he, he was definitely uh, thinking, okay, I'm about to step into world, so let, let's get some practice in with these forehands and in these tight wooded courses. At the same token, he really just felt like it was the safer, smarter shot on this hole. I can tell you guys, I really do love the um, backhand putter down the right-hand side. It is a, a lot more touch that you have to put on, but even though Weston Isaacs came up a little short, he was putting those mercies to work all weekend long. That's an aggressive upshot, though, by Weston right there. It was a little bit higher, than I think, than what he wanted, and there's that comebacker. And uh, from downhill, that's that's uh, you're looking at it, but that's not a, a not that's not an execution stroke. That was a decision stroke. He just bogeyed it because he just played the wrong shot. Which would you prefer? Off the tee pad? If you're going to have to take a take a stroke, execution or decision? I mean, ideally, we all want to make the right decision every time, don't we? Philo takes his stroke back. It's another birdie. He still looks unhappy. <laughs> That's the running theme here. <laughs> <laughs> I, would, I would, on this hole, I generally try to take the backhand hyzer route off the tee pad here just because if you can get it spiking down right, then you can get it to sit right in front of the basket. And uh, that forehand route, I feel like, has to travel a little bit further and do a little bit more. <laughs> in order to get into the basket. <laughs> so this was an amazing shot. The entire time we're sitting here thinking, is he going to slide down okay. and crack his jaw on the ground? <laughs> that would have been uh, really entertaining. That's good. Everything's good. It's totally fine. <laughs> I know, man. He could have done us a solid and, you know, yeah, took it Come on, Cole. Just next time, oh, eat man. it, please. And uh, that's going to be it for part one of round one of the fourth annual 21 Hole Salute, uh, a great car that we're following, including Philo Brathwaite. We'll come back and see you guys for part two of the 21 Hole Salute, Joe Mass Productions, and final round of radio.
Jesus.